The GOP doesn't own my vote and the Democratic Party doesn't own my vote. I'm looking for something authentic, common sense, and real. And as somebody who used to lean liberal and wants to feel welcome on the left wing side of politics, this next 10 second clip is a perfect representation of the PC culture and authenticity on the left now. Where's my ice cream? Ah, thank you. Mmm, big gay ice cream is the best. Big gay ice cream from Michael Bloomberg. Everything's so fake, stiff, corny, and completely unbelievable. Trust me, I love peace, love, and positivity as much as the next person, but it's hard to even fathom where they find these people. There's millions of struggling actors who could do a better job pretending to be genuine and for the cause. Not only stuff like this, there's a real energy that they don't even want you to be a part of the party. They don't even want your vote. Whether the political establishment treats you like a Trump deplorable or a Bernie bro or a Bernie Sanders loser as they try to call you. Look at this video of Joe Biden literally turning down a vote in the general election. He doesn't even want your vote. Support you if you win the nomination because we gotta get rid of Trump. But what are we going to do about climate change? Now, I, you say you say you're against pipelines, but then you want to replace these gas lines. That's not going to work. We can't. We, we got to stop building and replacing pipelines. We got to go vote for somebody else. All right. Thanks so much, sir. We're going to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to vote you in the general if you treat me. Yeah, I know. Well, can I? Thank you. Thank you. You're asking a picture of me coming up and telling me you don't support me. No, no, no. My plan. Yeah, you did. You said you. I said I will support you in the general. In the general. I'm looking for a primary. We're happy to get a member. That's right. He's quite literally just pushing you away. It's like, I will vote for you in the general. It's like, get out, get out of here. Go vote for someone else. How is that a strategy to win? How is that a strategy to unite? the country or even unite your party just get out of here and go away you think bernie sanders or trump would say that like you know i won't vote for you now but i'll vote for you in the general they'd probably be like thanks for your vote in the general rather than get out of here go Dude, this guy's ridiculous. How is he the front runner? It's like they don't even want to win. And then they're going to blame me and all these other people in Russia and you and people in middle America because they lost, but they don't want to win. If you need more evidence of that, they freaked out at Bernie Sanders because he put a Joe Rogan video on his Twitter and said, Joe Rogan endorses me. Bernie Sanders must reconsider Joe Rogan endorsement, says LGBTQ group. Human rights campaign says podcast Rogan has attacked countless marginalized groups at every opportunity. Bernie Sanders draws criticism for touting Joe Rogan endorsement. Stephen Colbert calls out Bernie Sanders' sexist support. I mean, the SJW PC culture left wing is now so sensitive that Bernie Sanders and Joe Rogan bother them. I mean, these are two of the only liberal and progressive people left on the left that actually have a following and a fan base. I mean, you don't have to like Joe Rogan, but the guy has literally one of the biggest reaches and podcasts in the world. He's a top MMA announcer. If you're a liberal, this is the exact type of guy you want on your team. This guy reaches the left wing, the right wing, fighters, all types of people. And you're just kicking him out like, oh my God, he bothered us and hurt our feelings. Even though he literally votes for our candidates, supports our policies, get him out of here. Bernie Sanders and Joe Rogan are two liberals for the liberal establishment or the progressive SJW crowd. I mean, process this type of embarrassment. There's millions of lifelong Democrat voters who don't want to vote for you because they're tired of this crap. Is it really that hard to figure out? Back in the day, Democratic candidates at least tried to reach out to voters and tried to reach out to everybody so they could get their votes. Now it's go vote for someone else, get out of here, you're deplorable, you're terrible, you hurt our feelings, so you need to leave. Yeah. Yeah. You, go vote for somebody else. All right. you might as well hand the election to Donald Trump and please don't blame me when you do. And now that I've defended Bernie Sanders from the freakout mob, let's be honest. From someone who used to actually like him and see the truth in him, this guy's become a total phony. If you don't believe me, his old stance on work visas and mass immigration is actually further right wing and further conservative than Trump's current opinion on work visas and work immigration. Trump's further left than old Bernie. And that gets us to the immigration issue. If poverty is increasing and if wages are going down, I don't know why we need millions of people to be coming into this country as guest workers who will work for lower wages than American workers and drive wages down even lower than they are right now. As to the fact that uh, 
uh, seven out of ten visas under the H-1B program go to Indian corporations that are outsourcing those positions to American corporations in this country, and that four out of five of those jobs that are supposed to be high-skilled jobs are actually category one jobs, That's right. which is low-skilled. Well, you raise a good point, and that this whole immigration guest worker concept is the other side of the trade issue. On one hand, you have large multinationals trying to sh shut down plants in America, move to China, and on the other hand, you have the service industry bringing in low-wage workers from abroad. The result is the same. Middle class gets shrunken and wages go down. Senator Bernie Sanders, we thank you for being with us as always. My pleasure. But now that same Bernie Sanders acts like anything that has to do with immigration is racist, sexist, xenophobic, and then he gets called racist, sexist, and xenophobic, and he says, I'm not that, but... How could you really feel bad for the guy when he does the same thing to Trump and people who support him and people who want to talk about the same things that Bernie Sanders used to talk about back when he knew it was popular to do so? But here's what I'm trying to tell the Democratic Party, the left-wing establishment, the progressive SJW, everything offends me crowd. What you think is popular is not going to be popular anymore because you're isolating literally almost everybody who wants to be a part of your team because everything bothers you. You can't have a conversation about anything. Meanwhile, the people who are calling you all these names all the time they seem to only want to talk about race and only talk about this stuff and when they do it it's cool but when you say anything it's bad every policy so when people like bernie get attacked by the media i defend him because i'm an honest person but i know that he'll do the same thing to the next person and that comedian will do the same thing to the next comedian and then when it's them well, i'm not that comedian well that's what happens when you throw other comedians under the bus because comedy is comedy comedy is a little offensive and mean sometimes they talk about gender they talk about race but that's kind of the funny part of comedy. The best comics make you crack up about yourself and other people, and the worst comics aren't funny. I mean, it's really simple. We don't have to put all these labels on it and cancel culture. And it's also backfiring against Bernie Sanders because there's gender tribalism. Even Joe Biden, for as much as he's the Democratic establishment, since he's a man, and plays the PC political correct game, he gets thrown under the bus. And half these news organizations don't give a crap about Bernie or Biden. It's because they play the, I'm the feminist, everything sexist game. Oh, wait, no, not me. No, not me. I'm supposed to. They don't care about you either. That's what happens when you lie. And what happens when you buy into political correctness, it's just annoying. It's not stopping racism or sexism. It's just making it creepier and weirder and more annoying and bothering more people. And then you look at Pew stats and they show you that more people in America are being raised by a single parent than anywhere in the world. Who would have known that gender tribalism and everything is sexist, everything is sexist, hate all men, do this, this, tribal, tribal. Who would have known that would lead to mass divorce rate in single parent homes? Well, besides everybody that's using their brain and using common sense. It's one thing to stand up for women. It's one thing to be proud of your gender, but it's another thing to be a total psycho who everything bothers you. You hate all the people. You don't want this. You, of course, it's not leading you to victory. We can balance this stuff. We could have real activism without having this psychosis and literally Bernie Sanders bothers my feelings now. It's like, come on. Not only is this tanking the left, but this idea that we have to pretend like everything we used to know a couple years ago doesn't exist anymore because we hate the guy in office, so we're just going to be a totally different person who pretends like we never know. Once again, if you don't believe me, look at this clip of Nancy Pelosi talking about the intelligence communities just a few years ago. There are many very patriotic Americans who are engaged in the intelligence community for years decades now I have saluted their service wherever the decision is whether it's from the administration as was the case and the Bush administration to withhold information from Congress I fought that but you don't fight it without a price because they come after you and they don't always tell the truth about it but now if Trump talks about that, then oh my God, he's a tyrant. He's tyrannical for saying what I said a couple years ago. And Bernie will accuse him of that. And then they'll accuse each other of that. And then they'll wonder why pe they're getting accused. Cause Come on, guys. To me, it's almost like the entire Democratic Party establishment and liberal culture, even on the progressive, we're not the establishment fringes, is just becoming so fake and upside down world. And trust me, I'm not a GOP apologist. I call out Trump when I disagree with him. His supporters, I disagree with quite often on things that they just go right, oh no, for sure. I disagree a lot and call it out a lot, but almost everything the media is doing is backwards. Look how they treat Tulsi Gabbard, who's by far the calmest, most reasonable, has kind eyes. The rest of them look like complete psychopaths screaming at each other, lying, forgetting their lines. She comes off reasonable, and you have left-wing media. And tonight's villain, Tulsi Gabbard. Thank you, Rachel. 
What an honor it is to be on this stage with my fellow candidates. I have no interest in those Dalmatian puppies. <laughs> I know it's SNL and I know it's jokes, but they use it to craft public opinion. Hillary Clinton's a ninja who can do all sorts of backflips and Elizabeth Warren's really cool, but Tulsi Gabbard's the villain. It's literal opposite world. She's the opposite of the villain out of that crew, but that's what they've become. Exactly what Malcolm X warned us about. They can make the guilty look like the innocent, the innocent look like the guilty, the hero look like the villain, the villain look like the hero, and they're literally that flipped up. So if Trump wins again and the right wing rises worldwide, those are my takeaways to why it's happening. You're you're pushing so many people in the name of diversity and tolerance and inclusion, you're becoming the least inclusive, even casting out the most famous people who agree with you and try to bring people to your party, and the most popular politician who's been pandering your talking points for 40, 50, 60 years. The most consistent one who's been bringing up the SJW social justice talking points forever, now all of a sudden isn't enough, or is everything he's accused other people of being. Hopefully this could be used to learn and grow, not just for the left wing in politics, but for the right wing as well. Because you win when you evolve, when you grow, when you learn, and when you correct mistakes. And you lose elections and you lose half the country when you become everything you claim to fight. Learn absolutely nothing and hate people who try to bring the truth or the lesson to you. Which is really what it's become, not just politically, not just establishment-wise, but even socially, where even the most honest anti-establishment progressives are afraid to weigh in on social and gender issues because they know that it's social and political suicide. And if you're in the inclusive, diverse group, you should feel allowed to tell the truth or call your own team out when you're wrong. I mean, that's how you get better. Let me know what you think. Have an amazing, amazing week. Stay calm, stay cool, stay blessed, and I'll be back with more videos.